the mindset shift here that we work on inside of our programs is the difference between a teacher and what we call a CEO teacher. There has to be a total teacher transformation somewhere between those two things where we go into our daily habits and our daily routines. We fight the fears of overwhelm and the fears of what critics may say. Teachers are so kind-hearted and they are so afraid what the teacher next door is going to say if they sell their resources or if they charge for a course. So much so that we forget our own worth and forget that if we do this for us, then it's okay. Hi there, teachers. It's Tim Topham here and you're listening to the Topcast episode number 213 and you are in for a treat today. We've got a very special guest and we're talking about becoming a CEO teacher. Yes, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in just a moment. I do want to give you a couple of quick reminders and updates about what's coming up. We have a webinar with the incredible Bradley Sowash coming up on the 29th of October. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern time and you can sign up for that at topmusic.co slash webinar. And in this free one-hour webinar, we're going to be unpacking jazz, jazz basics and jazz basics particularly that you can teach your students if they're invited to join a jazz band at school. And this is something that happens to us all the time. Certainly happened to me a number of times. And a student says, oh, I've been invited to join the jazz band. And you're like, yeah, that's fantastic, but I've got no idea what to do next. And I can't read this music that you've been given. So here's your solution. Find out what to do by joining our next webinar. As I said, 29th of October, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Sign up at topmusic.co slash webinar. In today's episode, we're chatting with a former classroom English teacher turned entrepreneur about how she transitioned from the classroom and how she's now helping other teachers around the world to sell products and services in online marketplaces. Today's show notes and full transcript are available as usual at topmusic.co slash episode 213. My guest today, Casey, is a teacher, online business owner, boy, mama, wife, and Peloton fanatic. She helps educators leave a legacy online by building a sustainable teacher business to impact more students, teachers, and parents worldwide, and to live the life they love. She supports entrepreneurs as they start, grow, and scale their businesses through her CEO Teacher Podcast, the Make Your Mark membership, and the CEO Teacher Academy. Well, welcome to the show, Casey Morris. So great to have you here. Thanks for inviting me, Tim. I'm excited to be chatting with you about all the things today. All these kind of entrepreneurial things and helping teachers think uh, a little bit more business-like. Uh, I've been a big fan of yours um, and followed you on Instagram for some time now. You've got a great channel there. And I've been watching what you you do over there and I've been trying to see how I can emulate some of those things actually because I'm trying to build my Instagram too. So you're teaching me as well. Um, let's just start with your background. I believe you were an English teacher in the classroom before you moved into online business. I was. So tell us about your life as a classroom teacher. What kind of ages did you teach and where were you teaching? Where are you based actually too? Well, thank you so much for saying all those nice things. I appreciate that. I just feel like I'm just some normal girl. So um, a little bit about me. I am Casey Morris, and I was a eighth grade English and language arts teacher located in South Georgia in the United States. And I was a teacher for eight years, and it was amazing. I absolutely loved it. And from there, I kind of found a new passion, which was selling my teaching resources online. I know a lot of Australian teachers are doing that as well. You know, just taking your lesson plans, bundling them together, and selling them online through the popular platform Teachers Pay Teachers. And I started that in 2013 out of necessity almost because we needed to make that income. And the first month I made $50, and I, the rest they say is history. You know, there's a deep story behind all of that. I was struggling through postpartum depression when I stumbled upon Teachers Pay Teachers and used lesson plans that other teachers had created. And and essentially, they saved my life because they allowed me to see what my life could be, that I could sell my lesson plans online and help other students as well. So it's a deep story, but um, in a nutshell, that's kind of the whole thing. And then from there, it's moved into what it is today. And now I get to help other teachers you know, build their business online by selling their teaching resources, either on Teachers Pay Teachers or on their own websites through their course or their membership. Yeah, I'm also an ex-classroom teacher, so I know the both joys and challenges that come from classroom teaching. I mean, there is a certain vibe and excitement that comes from a room full of kids and also the network of teachers that you have in schools. I really enjoyed that. Did you were there aspects of the classroom teaching that you miss and that you did enjoy? Or was it quite tough for you? 
Oh, I loved my job. And that was the hardest part. I actually quit two years in a row and asked for my job back because <laughs> <Really>? I am, <laughs> I did. I was like, you know what? I'm, j- I'm just kidding. I'm going to come back. So the students and I had such a dynamic relationship that I, f- I felt like I was indebted to them. I never went to work hating my job. I never thought that teaching was the most horrible thing ever. I felt like I was born to be a teacher. So leaving the classroom, I knew I had to continue that passion that was teaching. I just had to do it in a little bit of a different way. But I still see my students today and a lot of them are grown now and I hug them and I ask them about life. And I'll never say I won't ever go back because I truly enjoyed it. Yeah, that's great. And you can tell that passion comes through in in the work you now do. And I think if if you were a jaded teacher who didn't really enjoy that, you wouldn't be having so much success as you are now and you wouldn't be creating the kind of resources you are now too. So I think that's uh, an important point to make. What, one of these reasons why I like working with teachers and helping it, you know, inspire them is sometimes teaching can get you down. You can get pretty drained by it. And so just having some fresh ideas can also make a real difference. I just wanted to talk about your first product. I remember distinctly making my first ever online sale. Can you remember yours? I 100% remember Tell us about where it. I was. <laughs> um, it is so embarrassing. It's one of those things like, I don't want to go back there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, we did what anyone would do and you sell what you already have, right? So we were actually working on an Anne Frank piece. We were reading the diary of Anne Frank. And so I just threw up some like 10 question quiz or something like that. But I remember checking and seeing that I had made like 15 cents and you would have thought that I had made $1,500 because (laughs) for the first time in my life, I was being paid for my performance, how well I did something in the classroom. And it felt so good. And later on, TPT actually has an app now that cha-chings whenever you get a sale. And like those dances in the kitchen with my kids, like those were the best memories. (laughs) We were talking about your um, family just before we started, actually. And you said you were happy to talk about it. Um, I'm a family. I've got two kids as well. And I know the impact that moving into an online uh, business can have. Tell us about your family and, and how this move has affected you and your family. Man, it's changed everything. You know, I mentioned before, I just kind of touched on postpartum depression, but uh, my oldest son is my stepson. He's 16. And then I have an 11 year old and a 10 year old. They were born 12 months and 11 days apart. And if you're listening to this and you're a mama and you've had two babies close together, it can take a toll on your emotions, your hormones. And I was struggling for four years through a deep postpartum depression that I didn't realize. I didn't know that I needed to ask for help. I didn't know that I needed something besides what I was doing to make my life a little bit better, a little less black and white, as I like to say. But the week that I found Teachers Pay Teachers is also the week that I went to my doctor and asked for help. And when I say TBT saved my life, it was those two things married together that changed everything for me. And the sky began to be like blue again and the grass was green. And it was like this beautiful awakening inside of me that I knew that I could be a better mom. I feel like I missed four years of their life. And I could be the wife I was supposed to be, the mom I was supposed to be. And everything changed for me. Like I was the creator of my own future, like in an instant. And it was absolutely beautiful. And little did we know that uh, eight years later, we would have another baby. We also have a one-year-old now. And it's been so wonderful to have this baby who's brought so much joy into our lives because we have unlimited amount of time now. My job is how I want it to be. I write the rules and that is amazing. My husband is still in education. He's a high school principal. So to be able to pick my kids up every day from school and to take them to school every day and go to every birthday party and things like that was a luxury I didn't get to have when I was in the classroom. So Mm. it's been the best ever. It sounds like it's been a a really challenging road that you've come down. Yeah, we we made it. We made made it. it. Yeah. (laughs) And I haven't heard anyone talk about selling products online in such a deep and meaningful way. I mean, for most people, it's like, wow, I can actually do this. This is exciting. It gives me flexibility. For you, it sounds like this actually brought you out of a pretty dark place. Yeah. It gave my life purpose again, you know, and it it started with money. And I, I think that a lot of times in business, that's why we do things is, oh, how can we make some extra money? And it did start that way for me. It's like, all right, we need some money to pay the bills. I want to pay my Netflix bill. That was my goal. I need $8 a month to pay my Netflix bill. 
that was back when the DVDs used to come to your house. So it was much. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a while ago. Um, and so when I made $50, it was amazing, but it changed somewhere along the line of it was all about making money and I could produce this income for my family to I can make the biggest impact on the world that I want to make. It's all up to me. And that was just a total mindset shift for me. And with that impact comes massive income as well. But when you don't focus on the money, it's funny how it just comes to you easily. Mm. I often think about that approach too, that if I teach 30 kids on the piano behind me here, all the fun stuff that I love doing with my students, then that's great. But if I teach 30 teachers how to teach their 30 kids how to do that fun stuff, then you have that, you start looking at that impact. Uh, and yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. When you were started selling things on, uh, so when Casey mentions TPT, that's Teachers Pay Teachers, it's a marketplace for teaching resources. Were you teaching as well as selling things or did you stop one and start the other? Just to confirm that. Yeah, I started selling on Teachers Pay Teachers in 2013. And then I didn't leave the classroom until January of 2018. Okay. So I was selling for about four and a half years before I decided to leave the classroom. So did you see some income and growth there with potential that made the decision to stop teaching a little bit easier rather than just stop and go, wow, okay, let's try and build a new income stream. You already had built some of that up. Yeah, I did. And and that was part of the reason why, you know, coupled with my love for the students, why I quit my job and then asked for it back <laughs> because <laughs> fear is a real thing. And um, with TPT income or teachers pay teachers income, it kind of is this ebb and flow, right? When teachers go back to school, you make a lot of money and then Christmas rolls around and then you don't make a lot of money. So my first year, I'd love to share some numbers if you're okay with that. Absolutely. I think it's good for people to hear, but my first year I made 426 bucks. Yay. And man, that Netflix bill was paid for. <laughs> and I think we went on a beach trip with that. We were so happy. And then the next year I made $6,000. Wow, that is huge. I know. I don't know percentages because I'm not good in math, but that was a really good uptick in sales. And then from there, I made my teaching salary. And then the next year I tripled that. And it was everything. It was an opportunity that was laid in my feet that I didn't realize I could do. I can leave the classroom and do this full time because that was never my intention when I first started. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking, yeah, but can you really make extra income just selling lesson plans online? The answer is heck yes. Even now, you can make $100,000 a year just selling your teaching resources online, which is remarkable. How much marketing did you do in those years to build up that amount though? Or because I, I imagine it wasn't just a matter of putting some extra resources up. It was marketing the hell out of it. Would that be right? Yeah. You know, that's the thing. It's never easy. It sounds great and but rainbows and butterflies, but I had this passion inside me. I had, there were a lot of sleepless nights. There were a lot of early mornings, late nights. I loved it so much. And marketing was a decent part. Now, I didn't get an Instagram or a Facebook until about 2016. So that was about three years into my journey. But I was on Pinterest. I had a blog. But 2017 was when everything changed. I mastered a marketing plan. My growth exploded. And that's when everything began to really fall into place for me. I actually started a YouTube channel as well back in 2015. And little did I know was that that YouTube channel was still going to be the number one place where people found me even today. Really? That's really interesting. What do you put up on your YouTube channel? Don't go there. It's so bad. You know, it's so ironic because I had no idea. Wait, well, you're saying it's bad, but it still brings people to you. It's just not... I look back and laugh. I was just so young and my accent was really thick, very country, Southern accent. <laughs> But what's so funny is that all of those videos teach teachers how to get started with Teachers Pay Teachers because I was so happy. I just gave every bit of knowledge I had away for free and said, mm -hmm. please do this. You need to do this. It's fun. But I didn't know that that would be the future of my business even back then. Right. But that showed you that there was interest in that because I was going to ask you, what was that, ne that catalyst? Because you were enjoying having tripling your original teaching salary, you're making some good income. What then made you want to go, well, let's help some other teachers do this? Tim, I was working really hard. I was working 60 hours a week to maintain that level of income. 
Right. And I listened to James Wedmore, who is, I'm not sure. Are you familiar with James? I am. Yeah, absolutely. Love James Wedmore. He uh, is a course creator. And I listened to James Wedmore on stage one day say, the less I work, the more I make. And I thought he, I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like that doesn't, (laughs) how does it happen? My dad always taught me that the harder you work, the more money you make. And I've always had that hustle hard mentality. So I went out on a mission to figure out how I could work less and make more money. And that's when the idea of a course, like you said, that ripple effect of helping individual students versus helping, you know, thousands of teachers came into play. Mm. I imagine, do you like Amy Porterfield? Yeah, the the goat, the greatest of all time. Yes, <laughs> I thought so. I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> She's amazing. I followed her when I was uh, starting my course journey because I started with a course as well, actually, way back 2014 or something like that. Seems way back anyway. Yeah, totally understand. And, and following these um, online marketers has been pretty influential for me as well. Uh, and there's a number of them out there. As long as you... Find the right people because there are some charlatans out there. There always will be, I guess, and people who say that they're doing things that they're maybe not quite doing. Now, I wondered whether you could um, touch on mindset just briefly because in my own work helping teachers uh, think more entrepreneurially and think more business-y, I find that a lot of them do have sometimes limiting beliefs about it and feel awkward talking about money and charging and what do I charge and I shouldn't be charging too much because I'm a music teacher. And Do you find the same thing with some of your teacher students and how do you get around that? Every day, every day. Uh, teacher, that's why I ask if I could chat about money because for some reason in our profession, it's a big no zone, but in mm. every other profession, that's like everyone chats about it. So money hangups are a real thing. Why do you think that is? I don't know. And I, I've tried to break down the walls a little bit, but I think it's because we don't make a lot of money. So therefore it's kind of hush hush, you know, you, that's the only thing I can think of, you know, is that we don't make a lot of money and we aren't comfortable chatting about it because we've always kept it so quiet. And we, because teachers are some of the most passionate people on the planet, we feel like we're doing it as a service, I guess. Yes. And we get a bit of cash on the side just to help pay our bills. And that's nice. But really, we're doing it because it's meaningful for us and we believe in it. Yes. And, you know, a lot of my students come and say, Casey, I don't feel comfortable charging for my work. And I'm a teacher. I'm supposed to give and give and give. And that's okay. That's why I say give away 80% of your content for free. You're allowed to do that. Give away 80% of it for free and just charge for 20% of it. But know your worth and be expensive, but be worth it. So I am by far the probably most expensive course on the market when it comes to teachers. I remember thinking the first time I decided on my course price, there's no way a teacher is going to pay this. There's no way. So how can I make it worth it? And so that's what I did was pour my heart and soul is I never wanted a teacher to purchase and say, man, mm, it's not really worth it. You know, so the, the mindset shift here that we work on inside of our programs is the difference between a teacher and what we call a CEO teacher. There has to be a total teacher transformation somewhere between those two things where we go into our daily habits and our daily routines. We fight the fears of overwhelm and the fears of what critics may say. Teachers are so kind-hearted and they are so afraid what the teacher next door is going to say if they sell their resources or if they charge for a course. So much so that we forget our own worth and forget that if we do this for us, then it's okay. So it's definitely a hurdle that we go through, but it's amazing to see them on the other side when they start believing that it's not about money. It really is just about impact. And once you put that first and you really do what you do best, which is teach, the money will follow every single time. Mm, There's definitely a sense of that imposter syndrome too, isn't there? we identify ourselves as teachers. We're not business people. So how can we feel comfortable in that, you know, suit and tie kind of mentality? Do you find that that's an issue too? Yeah. Then I think the number one statement we hear is, but I'm just a teacher. Hmm. And I love when someone throws that at us and and I'll say, yes, you are just a teacher, but the online education system needs you now more than ever. You know, the projection for like 2025 is like $325 billion are to be made in the online education industry, people selling courses and memberships. And I believe teachers are at the heart of that. We finally are going to get to say that we are paid 
what we are worth. We are paid for our performance because there's a total teacher transformation happening. And I'm just so happy to be at the heart of it and be able to encourage these teachers every step of the way. Because it's a big learning curve. Mm. But I've taken a lot of courses from people that weren't educators. And it's obvious. Because it, it's hard to learn from people that aren't educators. Mm. I agree. Picture this. You're happily teaching a student and they let you in on a little bit of a secret. And the secret is that they've been invited to join the school jazz band as the jazz pianist. How cool is that, you think to yourself, and you compliment and praise your student and you say, well, you better bring in some music and I'll help you with it, knowing full well that you've got very little idea of what on earth to do next. Well, if that's you, and that sure has been me in the past, then you're going to want to explore the most recent course that we've added to Top Music Pro Studio and Evolution memberships. It's all about preparing a student for jazz band. No matter how much or how little you know about jazz, you will be able to understand the music that they're given, their role in the band, what comping is, how to give them solos and teach them the basics of improvising, and be able to look like an absolute pro in the process. With our special guest faculty, jazz extraordinaire teacher, Mr. Bradley Sowash. Now, if you would like to get full access to that course, all you have to do is head into the Academy inside Top Music Pro. And if you're not yet a member, then, well, what are you waiting for? Come and join us. Just head to topmusicpro.com. So you mentioned the CEO teacher. I love your trade name, brand name, whatever you want to call it. Tell us about the podcast and the, and the course that you've created. You said it's quite expensive. And what, what, how much is it? <laughs> Uh, well, you can't just start off with that question. You got to go with the whole, what the value <laughs> no, is. No, you've, su- you've surprised me now because <laughs> I don't know the answer. Tell us about the CEO teacher uh, resources. Sure. Let's talk about the podcast. So um, we've been doing the podcast. November will be two years. We just hit our 100th episode. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Well, um... And it was just started out to help teachers with this online marketing world. There's so much to learn. I was influenced by Amy Porterfield, as like as you mentioned before, and um, I thought, you know, I would love to do something that helps teachers just specifically with their marketing strategies. Um, we're almost at a half a million downloads, which is crazy. So it's been a wild ride, but it's so much. It's probably my favorite part of the business is the podcast. Um, I'm sure you can relate. Yeah, I love podcasting. Yeah. And it, I just love speaking to people from all over the world, and I, I just love sharing what I've learned over the years. But two years ago, we opened up our very first course. November will be two years ago. And it was a course called Transform Your Resources. And it just taught teachers how to sell on Teachers Pay Teachers. Mm -hmm. And then it went into blogging, kind of that marketing stuff you were chatting about before. Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. And at the time, I was charging $397. That's how much that course was. Okay. And little did I know that when I launched that course, that everything would change. My life changed in seven days. Wow. Uh, Hundreds of teachers bought that course and it would be the roadmap for the rest of my business career, I hope. So um, Mm, that's amazing. It was amazing. And it still is. Oh my gosh, it was only two years ago. But that course is now a membership and teachers can join in. It's $49 a month. We launch it twice a year. They get the course and then they get coached weekly by myself and a team of coaches where we guide them through because a course wasn't really enough. Like this is a lifelong thing. So we guide them through that, but then we realize that they wanted even more. So now we offer an elite program called the CEO Teacher Academy that includes our membership, that beginner's course, and also includes that mindset piece where we take them from teacher to CEO teacher And then there is a 12 module extension program that goes into building their business from start to finish, launching a course, launching a membership in any and everything in between by building your email list, opt-ins, landing pages, you name it, it's in that course, I hope. And if it's not, it will be one day. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. It's it's a very similar progression to what I've got with my membership in that we have an evolution tier, which does the same thing. And that's got my music teacher startup course, which is the same kind of concept, teaching music teachers how to build their online business, landing page launches and things like that. There is a huge need out there for it because if there's one thing musicians and teachers for that matter are never taught about it's business because we don't right. have to, we don't generally have to sort of think about it too much. So it is so needed and so important. 
What's your team look like? It sounds like you mentioned some coaches and things. How many people have you got that help you do this? I only have one full-time employee, which is amazing. I had a larger team and what I realized was it didn't bring me joy. I had a lot of people helping and a lot of moving parts and I'm just a small knit person, community. So I have one full-time employee and then I have about 10 people that help me in other areas, right? So we've got Facebook moderators. We've got someone that does the podcast, someone that helps us with blogging, someone that helps us with Instagram, someone that helps us with sales pages, with copy, with emails. So it's funny, no one really, they, they work a few hours a week, but they're just part of bigger organizations. And it's been much more manageable for me than to have like a quote unquote team of people that work full time and... Mm leading a team was just not, didn't bring me joy. How about you? I'm curious. Yeah, I've got, I've got a, a decent team of about 10, uh, but they're not all full-time. So I also have a lot of different people in different areas doing bits and pieces and you just using their skill set for what they're, what they're best at, what they're most passionate about. I think that's the most important thing really. But it, it does make a huge difference having, having help. And it's one of the things that I really encourage teachers to do if they can't automate something with software, which should be step one in their in running their studios in my case, then hiring someone, a virtual assistant, just for a few hours to do some of that admin uh, is just the first kind of step to giving you more time to do bigger level tasks. I think it's really important. Yeah, and to dream big because mm. when you're doing all those little tasks, you don't really have time to dream about the future of the company when you know, you're stuck in the inbox all day, every day. So yeah. I listened to one of your podcasts recently. It was about the eight traits of the CEO teacher mindset, which I really loved. Can you remember any any of those that you could just go over quickly mindset-wise that you covered in that episode or that is core to your CEO teacher program? Yeah. You know, the main thing for us is a collaboration over competition mindset. And what we found over the years is that there's a difference between people that take our programs And then people that take our programs and take massive action on what they have learned. So those two people are two different people. And as their coach, I think to myself, man, you both got the same materials, but this person is already launching this course and they're doing this, this, and this, and this person isn't. How can I help? How can I serve more? Well, the people that are being successful are collaborating and they are thinking along the terms of how can I get with like-minded individuals and make my business bigger and better? They're also saying, Hey, yes, I can to as many opportunities as possible instead of getting like stuck in a rut and stuck in one specific module, not moving forward. Another trait that we see is massive action. And I I mentioned that just a second ago, but we constantly say constant, persistent action forward to get you to your goal. It doesn't matter if you're walking one little bitty step at a time or if you're taking big giant leaps, every single direction forward is going to help build your business. But if you just say, oh, I'm stuck. This is just too hard. Throw up your hands. You know, that's the difference between a successful CEO teacher and one that just stays stuck where they are. And then, you know, I just think it's so important for everyone to realize that the most genius thing anyone that has been successful in the online business has ever done is that they just didn't give up. (laughs) <laughs> everybody can get hit here to where we are. I'm just a normal girl. Tim, I don't know if you're a normal guy, but I'm just a normal girl. <laughs> I'm pretty normal, um, yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I always say, it's so funny when I have these big meetings with these people and they're like, yeah, can you tell us about the back ends of your business? And I'm like, guys, I really don't know how this happened. <laughs> it just kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> it happens over years of persistence. That's what, that's what it it takes. I think persistence is absolutely right. I love your view on collaboration as well. Have you found that in the last 10 years, the closed door mentality of teaching has been broken down or started to break down? That idea that, no, I'm in my classroom, you're not allowed to see what I do, I'm not sharing things, is which was really pervasive, I think, 15 years ago, is now much less of a case. Are you finding that in America as well? Yes and no. I think that in the four walls of the classroom and in the school buildings, yes. I think that there is a lot of collaboration happening there. But I think in the online space of educators, I think there's a lot of closed doors still. People have this mentality of there's just not enough for everyone to go around. 
or there's not room for everyone on the playground. And we teach that there is room for everyone on the playground. So in our classrooms and in our school buildings, I do see a lot more open doors and a lot more inviting and sharing. My husband talks about it a lot. Mm. Teachers coming together and making curriculum for everyone, which is amazing. But educators in the online space, we aren't there yet. And I see it every single day. And that's why I, I vowed to make a community that was different than what I had seen in the past. Look at your own business now. What's been the best marketing for bringing people into your websites and programs? I think if you had to pick one thing, it would be search engine optimization every day. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's you showing up in Google search rankings uh, organically, right? You're not talking about paid AdWords? Correct, yes. And so how, do you, how have you gone about making sure you show up for the keywords that you want? So I chatted earlier about in 2017, I like mastered my marketing plan and everything seemed to fall into place. Well, I was, again, working really hard and I couldn't figure out why people were still dominating. Like I wasn't in number one on search. I wasn't number one in any place. And it was frustrating to me. And I, I had the mentality that I was the last one to the race, right? That I was too far behind. I couldn't catch back up. And so I decided to work smarter not harder. And I said, what is something that I can do that not everyone's doing and I can get really good at it? And it just so happened to be search engine optimization. So I started taking courses. I started really learning and it became like a fun game for me. Okay, let me see if I can get this to rank number one on Google. And it did. And then it did again and again and again. And so I tell my students is I can get you the number one spot on Google every single search, every single time. Now the catch is it's not going to be what you thought it was going to be. So you may come to me with a word and I'm going to say, no, no, you can't rank for phonics games in 2020. Scholastics already got that taken. So you got to kind of step it back a few notches and really understand long tail keywords and related keywords and alt text on images and things like that, which I know is kind of nerdy talk, but it really, truly helps. And that has been the most fun is to see my students say, oh my gosh, I'm number one on Google. And <laughs> yeah. I think that was my ace in the hole. Yeah. And it really, it takes knowing your audience as well and knowing what the teachers will be searching for or might be searching for. If it's not phonics games or whatever you mentioned before, what will they search for that you can rank for? That, that is really important. Yeah, you get me. The other thing I'm noticing Casey, is that you're, you're, you have invested a lot in your own learning. And I think this is an important point to make. You haven't had all this success through just sheer grit and determination. You've invested. Tell us about that. And maybe because I know the reason I want to bring it up is because I know a lot of teachers are a little bit iffy about, oh, there's a $200 course and oh, am I going to have time and it's too much money and things like that. Tell us how you were able to reframe that in your own mind. It was a baby step progression. I first spent a lot of money on courses that were horrible. I spent a lot of money on those $97 courses and $100 courses. And what I found was is that the more money I paid, the more value I got. And I thought, oh, this is kind of crazy how this is working out. And I just, like you said, started investing. So if I, if I made money, I had an allotment each month of what I was going to spend in my course areas, you know, like investing in me kind of thing. Your professional development. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe I needed a new printer and I also needed to buy this course. It wasn't until 2017 though, that I started spending the big bucks that, oh my gosh, I'm going to throw up when I bought the course <laughs> <laughs> um, or come home to my husband and be like, babe, I put it on the credit card. I'm gonna pay it off in two months. You know, like that was that was what I did for the first little while. And I will tell you that every single course that I paid over nine hundred and ninety seven dollars for paid itself off tenfold. Every one of them. Wow! Can you tell us some of the people that you follow and the courses that you've done over time? One hundred percent. Yes, I'm obsessed with Stu McLaren. Oh yeah, he's the tribe guy, right? Yeah, he's the membership guy, obsessed with Amy Porterfield. The first $997 course I ever bought was Webinars That Convert. Oh, uh, yeah. Back in 2015. And you know what's so funny is that it's taken me until this year to... I'm, I'm going to do my first live webinar in a few weeks. Oh, really? So I bought her course five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I literally still have it. And I went back and I was flipping through everything. 
I bought a blogging course. Oh, by, she has a funny name. I want to say it's Rachel something. So Amy Porterfield, Pat Flynn, Jenna mm. Kutcher, James Wedmore. I, I mean, just anybody. Oh, I am obsessed with Neil Patel. I don't know if you, he oh, doesn't yeah. really have any courses, but I read everything Neil Patel writes. Is he the I will teach you to be rich guy? Is that that guy? No, he is Uber Suggest. So he's the guy that created Uber Suggest, which is the like world's leading search engine optimization free like platform. Ah, uh, yes. No, I have heard of that. Yes. I love him. There you go. And then I devoured every podcast in the world. Like you said, I listened mm. to Amy Porterfield's podcast from number one. Wow. Okay. I can't say that I did that, but I did listen to her a lot. She's just so great. <laughs> yeah. Listen to her on double speed though. If you, if you do, if you like tap it, you can get it, yeah. you can get more in, in a little bit of time. There you go. And it's been interesting <laughs> seeing her own transformation over to memberships in the last year as well. And I know she's linked in with Stu McLaren. She was connected with Rick Mulready about paid ads as well. She did a lot of work there, but I, I did learn, I learned a lot from them, Pat Flynn as well. It's been a fascinating journey to connect all those non-music and non-teaching related people and bring it into the teaching area. Uh, and uh, it's been hugely helpful for me. I'm be really interested to hear how your webinar goes because I do monthly webinars. I've done them for a very long time and I've always found teachers to really respond to webinars. So I think you'll, I think you'll have success there. Yeah, we need to chat about that after we get off the air. I got lots of questions for you. I've, sure. I've done pre-recorded ones, just not uh, live ones. So I'm eager to jump in. Oh, I don't think Amy would approve of that. She'd say you need to go live before you go pre-recorded, wouldn't she? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I just want to sort of start wrapping things up, but I wanted to ask you about Instagram because I do see you doing great things over there. Have you found... In my own work, Instagram to me is a great way to connect with an audience and build relationships and brand and things like that. Less so about direct making an income from it. Do you find the same thing or do people convert quite strongly for you from Instagram into some of your products? I think both is the answer for that one. I I can't tell you in all, you know, there's not data I can pull from Instagram and say, this is how many of my followers bought for me, which bothers me as a business owner. I like to run Facebook ads and say, this is my cost per lead. This is my cost per conversion. I'm just a data driven person. So with Instagram, it's not about that. It's about the connection game. But what we found was that a lot of people will say, I found you on Instagram. So we try to build out the relationship, the know, like, and trust factor there. I talk about my family, my kids. It's not all business related unless it's launch season, which it is right now. So if you go to my Instagram, what we're doing is attracting and repelling right now. We want to attract the people that want in and we want to say goodbye to the people that don't, which is hard for me because I wanted to attract everyone. I wanted everyone to be my Instagram follower, everyone to love me. But when you run a business, you also have to remember that like your goal is to help as many people as you can help. And some people aren't going to like it and that's okay. So that's the season that we're in right now. We have shifted our Instagram strategy this year and we've used it more as a billboard for our company. And that's been a little different for me and I don't love it. I think we're probably going to go back. What we saw was a massive decline in likes when it comes to dropping a picture or dropping a post. Our likes are way down, but our business is flourishing and our number of followers is growing exponentially. So it's kind of a, you have to figure out what's important. Are the likes on your photographs important or are the people converting important? Mm. Yeah. They call it vanity, vanity metrics, don't they? Those, yeah. I've got 10,000 so followers, true. but I don't actually have a way to convert them into <laughs> being customers of mine. Yeah, it's very important. Important distinction. Yep. Oh, like I love what you're doing on Instagram, so keep it up. It's been uh, interesting because you can, it sounds like you went a little bit more formal, less about family and you and your personal situation, and now you're feeling a move back to that. And in fact, I did something similar because we branded at the start of this year and we went a little bit more formal, making sure things looked right and branded. And now I'm moving more to let's be a bit more casual, let's do more behind the scenes. And that seems to be working so far. So we'll see how things go. I have to say, 
when I uh, wanted to connect with you for this podcast, I went to your website. And as soon as I went back onto Facebook the next time, guess who hit me with a retargeting ad? Yes. Casey Morris. <laughs> and I, I went and spoke to my marketing team and I'm like, all right, we've got to sort out this retargeting because Casey's just, look what she's done. It's <laughs> So you, you gave me a, a good reminder there about the power of following people around the internet without being creepy about it. <laughs> it was well, well thank done. you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mentioned Rick Mulready as well, and I did take his Facebook ads course. So I went into, I went into all the things. I, I actually did coaching with him for a little while as well, but wow. Facebook ads are a way to reach the masses that we couldn't do before. But it's always important to know that they may go away one day. And that's a scary thing. Mm. But Facebook and Instagram ads have been very, very important and vital to my business as well. And do you run that yourself now or do you have people that help you? I have a team that does my Facebook ads, but, and this is a big but, and I encourage everyone, I I know it like the back of my hand. And Mm. I think that you don't want to micromanage people, but you don't want to be dumb about it either. So I want to be able to be in that conversation and then throw numbers and data at me and me be able to say yes or no. I I know everything that they're talking about. And I think you lose money if you hire people, but you don't know the lingo in the conversation. I think that you run a very large risk of losing a lot of money by not understanding what's going on in every avenue of your business. Well, let's finish with some just quick tips for teachers who are keen to make just a little bit of income selling their resources on the side, maybe dipping their toe in the water. Have you got maybe two or three little ideas that you can share? Oh, yes, please. I'd love to just get everyone started with my top secrets. I call it the business map of secrets where you can go and download this whole map of the last seven years where I've learned the ins and the outs, the Facebook ads, everything all piled into one little map that you can find it at caseymorris.com slash map. And it's spelled really weird. It's K-A-Y-S-E-M-O-R-R-I-S.com slash map. Thank you. We'll make sure we send people over to your website and your podcast as well. The CEO Teacher Podcast, if they search for that. That's it. Yeah. Fantastic. Recommend everyone checks that one out. Have a look at you on Instagram and um, really appreciate your time today, Casey. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. Thank you so much for calling on me, Tim. I appreciate it. No worries. Speak to you soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's interview with Casey. She's so inspirational. Go and check her out on Instagram and socials and follow her on her website. You won't be disappointed. Now, make sure you remember to register for our next upcoming webinar. It's with the one and only Bradley Sowash about preparing students for playing in jazz bands at schools. And you can join us live. It's the 29th of October, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And you can join us at topmusic.co slash webinar. We will release a replay. It'll be available for 48 hours to the general public and then uh, to members in an ongoing capacity. And you can actually access all our back issues of all of our webinars. We've done probably over 40 now even on our light tier, that's just $10 a month, you get free sheet music and you get access to all those webinar replays. So next week on the podcast, we're actually looking back again at an episode with Bradley Sowash about jazz improvising. And we go all Mythbusters style and break down some jazz improv myths and give you some tips to implement in your teaching. So that's next week. I'm Tim Topham and you've been listening to the Topcast from topmusic.co. I'll speak to you next time. For more information about this episode and to find out how to enhance your own teaching, visit topmusic.co. You'll find everything you need for your studio, from lesson plans to cheat sheets, quick win teaching ideas and guides on how to build your teaching business. Plus, you'll be connected to a global community of the world's top music teachers. And when you're ready, join hundreds of other teachers around the world by becoming a Top Music Pro member and get access to all our bonus content and flagship courses. And don't forget to follow topmusic.co on social media and subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to it. That's all for today. We'll see you in the studio.